All right, and we are live. So hello everyone and welcome and thank you for joining me in the stream today. So I know I haven't done a stream in a while and I apologize to you guys for that, but I think you guys are really gonna to enjoy this. So today we're doing an unboxing, but we're not just unboxing one instrument. So you may have seen some unboxing videos on YouTube, maybe like one clarinet. We have over 20 instruments here in this package. Um, oh, we've got, we've got some people joining in the chat. Hey everyone. Um, so yeah, uh, 20 plus instruments. Um, so this package weighs 97 pounds, by far the heaviest uh, package I've ever had shipped to me. And uh, trying to get it into the house was a an ordeal in itself. Do you know, actually, I wasn't even here today when it showed up. Jess, do you want to kind of explain how, how we got this giant thing in the house? Yeah, so the UPS man got in here and I saw him struggling trying to get the box off of the truck. So I greeted him at the door, and he somehow managed to get inside without falling on the ice, but he kindly offered to push it inside for me, not knowing what was in the box. So we just left it where he pushed it, honestly. Um, yes, um, there are actually, we, I, I'm pretty sure there's one oboe at least in here, but yeah, so we'll go through all the instruments. I'll kind of explain the details, uh, talk a little about them. But yeah, getting this thing in here was <laughs> I, from what I understand, it was a huge ordeal, and uh, it's made worse by the fact that it is just uh, a sheet of ice outside. It is freezing. Um, but yeah, so uh, I mean, you put sand down for the UPS man, so we were nice. <laughs> I wish I had some salt to put down because I kind of feel bad for him. Like, did he carry it over? Yeah, yeah, he walked it, and then he decided to walk in a snow bath so he didn't fall on the ice. But well, this morning, I think it is <laughs> down to like six, according to my car. It was. I think right now it's like maybe 20, so it's a little warmer. But yeah, oh my god, I feel got sorry for the guy lifting a 97 pound package and walking with it on ice. But uh, anyway, yeah, so let's, uh, I guess let's just uh, start opening up this box and just see what's in here. So I should mention that, uh, I guess let me talk about the story if I got this. So I was just kind of browsing eBay um, and I was happening to looking for listings that were ending soon. I just, I just happened to see a lot of 20 clarinets and the, the bid was kind of low. And I saw some instruments that I thought might be interesting. I, I they didn't really like list the brands or anything. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I kind of had an idea of what we're getting. So I guess we'll see. Uh, uh, here is the, is the internet a little laggy. Uh, sorry guys, you know, my Wi-Fi is not the greatest. So um, if it gets really bad, let me know. Maybe I can restart the stream. Um, but yeah, let's just keep going. Let's see how it goes. Anyway, I guess uh, time to open this thing up, right? It's like, oh yeah, I guess this counts as our uh, Christmas special. <laughs> oh man, negative thirty. I could not do that. Like, I think the coldest I've ever experienced is like negative ten, and that yeah. was just insane. I went outside for like a second just to. When shells last year, that is twenty five old point. I don't even know why I'm living in my head. Okay. I'm so excited, it's like Christmas. <laughs> I got it, I got it. Oh, my. Right. Is packaging split? Packaging split. So there's literally like no packaging. I guess, let me see if I can tell this. So there's like no packaging material whatsoever. It's just like boxes and boxes of clarinet. So this should be pretty fun. <laughs> I'm serious, I got more hot case. Okay, which one should we do first? Well, you have a clarinet not in the box. Right. So this is a lower joint of something. It is a, 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 a barrel duct tape to the bell. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of instruments, but I was hoping it would at least kind of package them. I mean, I, I, heard, I think most of them were like supposed to be um, Kind of in rough condition anyway, so I think that's why they didn't. Oh yeah, at least they had cases. I mean, that, that kind of protects it uh, from the shipping. Yeah, uh, uh, they're kind of Alto Christmas tree. Yeah, <laughs> that's one. <laughs> I wish I had some lights to put on it because a few years ago, for like an Instagram picture, I, I, I did like a clarinet with like lights and ornaments that came out really good. I wanted to do something with this, but unfortunately, I don't have any lights. I, I still do not have a Christmas tree set up actually. Picking that up tomorrow. It's a prelude. Okay, so this is just a prelude um, instrument made by Con Selmer. Nothing fancy, so I'm just going to kind of set that to the side for now. 
Nothing I really care about. Okay, so which case should we open up first? Yeah, yeah this looks like advantage. My first square. Table. I'm actually kind of happy to see Yamaha because my plan is to like kind of maybe keep a few of the instruments and then just kind of sell off the rest. There's something good case. Oh, joke, good case. Something was stuck. Case is good. Yeah, this should be my trigger. <laughs> okay. It's not junk. Okay, so it's a so it's a Yamaha Advantage. So what's really weird about this? Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. I don't know why this keys off. It doesn't even look bad. Yeah. But what's really weird about the Yamaha Advantage is like this was an instrument that Yamaha released specifically as a rental instrument. It was only supposed to be sold to like music shops for like rental fleets. But for some reason, they get sold to like uh, just uh, normal players. Um, at a, 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 lot, a, a lot, really, probably more commonly than the, uh, well, at least where, at least in my area, they're they're more common to see them like the, the Yamaha 200 series. But, uh, yeah, exactly. A, a lot of people have them. But I, I don't, I guess like Yamaha's plan to make them a rental instrument didn't really work out, which is, um, it works out for people who have them because they come in like these really nice hard cases, which I do really like. So this instrument, yeah, it's in fairly good shape. Um, the, the nice about these instruments is they all have uh, Valentino pads, so I don't even think I really need to repad this one. I just kind of clean it up, put that key back on. I don't see anything else wrong with it. So that's a good instrument right there. I could probably, if I wanted to sell it, I could probably sell it for like 200 bucks. That's true. Yeah, and they're, they're good playing clarinets too. Like all 100 meter horns. Okay, what's next? This case, this also looks like a Yamaha case. Yeah, Yamaha. I mean, this, these are older Yamaha cases though. This is a Yamaha. Oh yeah, so this is okay. So this is actually a good comparison. So um, these two clarinets were sold at the same time, basically like side by side. So they're essentially the same instrument. So this is the 250, and this is the. Or no, I'm sorry. This is the 250, and this is the Advantage. And from what I understand, they're essentially the same clarinets, except this one has skin pads, which I can see are starting to kind of fall apart in this instrument. And this one has Valentino pads, so they shouldn't really last longer. And of course, the case. And other than that, that's the only difference between them. Um, yeah, so generally, if you have a choice, you can want to choose the advantage. But it's interesting that they're both in here. So again, another good student clarinet I could potentially sell for like $200. So that's good. And that, that happens sometimes with me. So like, um, if I try to watch a stream live, it um, it lags a lot, so I like put a little bit back. Actually, I found that if you have um, a Windows computer, if you use Internet Explorer instead of Chrome or Firefox, for some reason the videos stream a lot better. I don't know, that might be worth trying. I'm interested in case. Yeah, so uh, this these look like the pretty common cases you get from China. Yeah. You want to open one? <laughs> yeah, anytime you see like a, a case like that with like the with like the, the basic rectangle shape with like the rounded edges and the nylon, on it. it's generally a Chinese instrument. We have a broken zipper. Yeah, that's that like because my Bassett clarinet came in one of those cases and the zipper broke like almost immediately. What is that wood? No, it's plastic. Okay. Is it yeah, it's just like an aluminum clarinet. Yeah, it's the zipper piece. It doesn't even have a brand on it, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it oh wait, it does have a brand. Is it, uh, like something cheap and Chinese and, and <laughs> okay, that's a parts clarinet. That's going in the junk pile. Okay, where's an exciting one? Oh, it's not. It's not really boom. It okay, before we do that though, I really want to open this one. So I think I know what's what inside. Uh, it says LeBlanc. It looks really cool. So it's got the, uh, the old style like LeBlanc badging on the case, and it's like a white leather case. This thing is like so 50s. I just love it. I wish like, these terms don't come in like fancy cases like this anymore. They all come in like the like the backpack style cases. All right. Oh yeah, this is exactly what I was looking for. So this. 
is a LeBlanc E flat clarinet. In fact, it is the, ooh, it's a LeBlanc Symphony 3 E flat clarinet. That is a nice instrument. So this thing is one of the instruments I did identify in the pictures, and it's probably the, it's the main reason that I bought this little kit. Um, so, uh, I don't know, there's not much to say about these other than they're just really good E flat clarinets. Unfortunately, uh, LeBlanc is no longer around as a company, but uh, back in the day, they were like right up there with Buffet, and depending on who, who you ask, many people have been considered them to be better instruments than uh, Buffet. Uh, so this is an older instrument, probably 50s, uh, and you can tell because it has the, uh, the unplated nickel keys. Uh, unfortunately, I would try to play it, but it doesn't look to be in perfect shape. I don't see any cracks, but the uh, the pads, actually, they don't look terrible. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an E-flat mouthpiece on me. Maybe, I'll, maybe towards the end of the stream, I'll try and get an E-flat mouthpiece, and I can see. But this is, I'm really I'm really excited to get this one overhauled, because I think this is going to be a great horn. How much was the lot again? Okay, so the whole lot was I think my bid was something like $600 and some change. And then surprisingly shipping was only $35 for a 97 pound box. So either they ate a lot on shipping or they got a really good rate. But uh, I mean, yeah, it, it shipped with like UPS and it got here in like uh, two business days. So you can't be bad, right? Yeah, you flat, LeBlanc, you flat clarinet. That'll be a very fun project to overhaul. All right, so you want to do that clarinet next? And we're not even like, we're not even a quarter away from the clarinets. This is like, I feel like a kid at Christmas. This one is most likely an art lead. I would just like double So I think my first, um, well, my first D flat clarinet was a, uh, that's she, but surprise it had to be ground, right? Oh, yeah, it definitely had to be ground. It, it, it thing. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, shipping had to be over a hundred dollars for this. I guess I just, I'm open, I think I just put like thirty-five dollars shipping, and then just uh, they just ate the rest of the cost. But uh, yeah, it was a really good deal. So I'm glad I went for that price. I have an alto clarinet goes to low E. That's an open hole. I'm assuming it's either like a, a con or a color, or I guess it could be like a bungee, right? I mean, depending. Unfortunately, um, the problem with like alto clarinets that only go to low E is that, like, as you probably know, the middle B sounds like, it sounds different from the notes around it. Uh, yeah, that's not, unfortunately they're not as popular, but the good news is that um, the literature in it with a, that is out there for alto clarinet, you don't see low E on the flat a lot, so it's still a useful instrument. <laughs> I'm not sure what your question was, but there's some history about alto clarinets. Bundy. Um, actually, Oh yeah, a, oh never mind. I was talking about this. But yeah, I, I, my first al my first ever clarinet was actually a Bundy alto clarinet. And as much as people hate on them for like the open holes, I really like Bundy alto clarinets. Okay, um, it is clarinet time. So this is just a. Uh, oh, is it an early clarinet? Because the bell says the Question: Because it does say made in Germany. Does it say made in Germany? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I see the Artly logo. But to me, this looks kind of, no, I don't know what this is. Okay, so this is like a mix and mash of yeah. various clarinet parts because the upper joints are Artly, the lower joint is maybe a Schreiber, and the, and the bell is a, a, a Bichier Aristocrat. So unfortunately, that's kind of common with like school instruments. Is as like parts break, they'll they'll. Uh, it's not uncommon for different clarinets to be like different parts from different clarinets to be assembled together to make one playing instrument. Unfortunately, this instrument is probably just going to be a parts instrument. Um, that's not too big of a deal though. We got plenty more to go through. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna like one up you. I just purchased a LeBlanc paper clip contra alto clarinet that goes down to low C. Yeah, the one up you guys. Oh, I, that thing was nice. Um, yeah, but I already bought 20 clarinets, so I don't <laughs> I literally doubled the amount of clarinets I have in her game. <laughs> if I ever get a paper clip, I'm probably going to get a contrabass. But yeah, I was ironing that contrabass, though. That thing was nice. Um, okay, next one. 
Wait, is that a Yamaha case? Uh, kind of looks like a Yamaha case. I, I've seen, I had a Yamaha YCL 34. Kind of came in a case like this. Oh, not a Yamaha. Well darn. Oh, wait, wait. This is an Artley Bell and a Fisher Clarinet. <laughs> okay, so this. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so now this clarinet has the original bell, and this clarinet has two of the four parts that are original. So that's step in the right direction. And I, I'm sure these clarinet parts are all mixed up, so I guess we'll see. I don't know. I, I, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I'm gonna, probably going to sell a lot of these instruments for parts and probably uh, maybe you're a forever spew and sell them as like a. It's uh, like student instruments. I'm sure some of them are probably pretty good players. What is that? I love how like most of them just have a sticker that says junk on them. I don't know. This is a. Oh, it's an accelerator. Oh, funny. Uh -huh. It's a. Oh, it's yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a Selmer 1400, and the 1400 is basically the same as the Bundy. It's essentially the new version of the Bundy. Um, nothing too much, but nothing too special about this. Decent student instruments, uh, pretty well built. Uh, again, another instrument I could potentially like fix up and sell as a student instrument. But uh, yeah, so Bundy clarinet. So you guys get a better look at it. Um. Actually, no. This one, let me uh, let me try and play this instrument because this one actually looks like it might be playable still. I got my mouthpiece here. I'm sure some of these instruments. At least I'm hoping some of these instruments are playable. Yeah, because if you look at the um, if you look at the cork, it looks like it was it was replaced with a composite cork. So it looks like some of these instruments were at least serviced recently. Because I'm assuming most of them are like ex school instruments or something. Because uh, that, that it's pretty that's a pretty common way to see a clarinet center the used market or a school will just have a bunch of oh, the cork just slipped. Okay, so that cork probably needs to be replaced. <laughs> That actually doesn't play bad at all. Uh, it's very cold. <laughs> I was noticing that the key was a kind of feel weird. It's because the springs, well, there were the one of the screws fell out. Yeah, so this key. Okay, so it needs a new screw, but fortunately I have I actually have one of these instruments in my parts inventory. I have a broken one, so I can just take a screw from that. This one's actually in pretty good shape, so I could um, potentially just do a little little service to this and sell it. Probably sell it for like maybe a hundred bucks. So right there, like just in the, the clarinets I went through so far, I've already more than like doubled my investment in this. So hopefully this turns out to be a pretty pretty smart move, hopefully. Um, I don't think that's supposed to happen. I'm sure that's why it ended up in this like uh, this box of junk instruments because it's not uncommon for like an instrument to be like let's say it loses a screw or something, and a lot of times schools just think, well, it's probably easier to sell that instrument than it is to fix it. Fix it. Yeah. But for someone like me who's just doing this kind of for fun, freelance, yeah, yeah, freelance, it's, yeah, and, and then just have, if I have the parts, it's it's easy to fix and it's a good way to just uh, flip a clarinet and get a student a good instrument that'll play really well. Like uh, usually when people ask me what instruments do I recommend for students, it's usually something like a Selma 1400 or a Vito or something cheap that you can get for like a hundred dollars, but it still plays really good. So, yeah, so I'm sure this instrument, once I get it all fixed up, will serve some student well. So oh, I found something very interesting. It's like a weird clarinet. It's very weird. Can you tell me what type it is? Okay. Okay, so, then, yeah, so someone mentioned, are there oboes in this? Uh, is there an oboe in this lot? Yes, there is an oboe. Uh, I thought it was a cellar. Unfortunately, it turns out it's a Linton. Uh, so nothing fancy. Darn, I was really hoping for a summer. At least something decent. 
I don't know. Uh, somebody who knows something about oboes, are Linton oboes like, are they pretty much universally junk or is there any chance that it could be good? It looks like, oh, it's made out of Grenadilla at least, and it has silver plated keys. It has, does it have the left hand F? It does have the left hand F. Um, it does not have a third octave key. It does not have the low resonance hole on the bell. That's all I know about oboes. But I do have an oboe read, so um, <laughs> you might want to mute the volume now because I'm going to try and play oboe. People commenting about it. I think a lamp. Oh, okay. Darn. I kind of figured. A lamp for sale? You can't win them all. I don't know. Well, I'm going to torture Brett and when we play some mobile. <laughs> Sorry, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> to make it worse, this is a read I bought on eBay for $5. What kind of mouthpiece do I have? I have a Clark Bogues 10K. Um, specifically, I, I use the non-blue one, although my girlfriend, I think, uses the blue one. I do. I have a blue one, but I actually like the non-blue ones better. Blue tips are made of plastic. Yes, I, 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 I actually might assume I bought is plastic. Uh, I, I actually, I did have an oval at one point, and it was a wooden linton, and I remember selling it because I couldn't fix it because it's missing a key. How do you do a C on the bottom? Oh, it's the I hate elbow fingers. Please. I don't know. I'm probably just going to keep this just to mess around with it because I know Linton like, elbows aren't really valuable. So this is like the perfect instrument for me just to like fool around and just if I want to play a double reed instrument, I'll mess around with it. If I want a better elbow, maybe I'll get one. <laughs> Please end this madness. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I will never play oh, elbow again. Not in the same room. I'm going to put this away forever and never, never touch it again. In which case, it oh, okay. can what about me? She's using a clarinet currently. I don't know. I should figure out your mouthpiece. Good. Everybody's commented about my blue marble mouthpiece. Oh, it's almost as bad as my bassoon playing. Yeah, I bought I bought the tenor room because I thought I would learn how to play bassoon, and that didn't that didn't end up happening. I'm probably gonna end up getting rid of it soon. I got mine in excellent condition for four four hundred fifty. Was it? You got an elbow? What kind of elbow was it? I should get a cheap elbow just to play names on. <laughs> Anybody want to hear the lick on elbow? Probably not. <laughs> so, the good part is this clarinet does manage to get you. It's uh, Armstrong. Armstrong. So, I believe they're owned. I think everybody. God, all like the student companies are owned by Con Selmer these days. Oh, uh, went elbow. That's not a bad price. I mean, don't <laughs> Okay. Oh, I found the other cap for the elbow, at least in this case. So. I'll deal with later. Okay. So this is an Armstrong 4000. I've never heard of that. But Elkhart, Indiana, it's most likely made by Con Selmer. Uh, again, just a cheap, simple student instrument. Nothing fancy, plastic. Um, I kind of like these trill keys though. They kind of remind me of the trill keys of like the Bakun Mova. Ooh, what I could do with this clarinet, I could like, um, I could brush the wood and make it look like a wood grain finish. And I can get like a Mova barrel and bell and make it like a knockoff Bakun Mova. Like, you know, like those fake Lamborghinis. <laughs> like the fake Lamborghini of clarinets. This is <laughs> The con. No. Oh, what's the key is like totally upside down. There's pads everywhere. Right. Don't okay. look over the Christmas tree. No, that'd be bad. I spent way too much time to build this thing. Okay, what's the next player now? All right. You gotta show the camera. Good job. <laughs> okay, so this so this one's a wooden clarinet at least. So that's a, a step in the right direction. Um, 
But I cannot, what is the brand? It's Jean Boucher, Jean Boucher. But, it, but this is weird, look at the, the logos. They look like they're just like, it's a piece of tape with a logo. It looks like a sticker on the wood, but it's fairly well done. Uh, made in France. So this is just a generic French stencil clarinet. And what I mean by that is like in the, um, like the 50s, 60s, 70s, it wasn't uncommon, oh, well before that actually, it wasn't uncommon for there to be like several manufacturers across uh, France. And um, they would basically just make blank clarinets. And uh, these essentially be stencil instruments, which means that um, the company that manufactures them and sell them to the distributor and the distributor puts their name on them. So you'll get a lot of clarinets that are made by different companies, but they may have the same logo. And even though a logo may appear on an instrument, that doesn't necessarily mean they made their instru that instrument. Like for a good example, this is bass clarinet. So back in the, um, the early uh, 20th century, uh, Bundy bass clarinets were actually made by Kohler in Germany. Um, of course, now they, well, more recently they were made in the United States, but yeah, they were, they were actually, uh, Kohler's professional, professional instruments were actually uh, Selmer's intermediate instruments. This is kind of a little bit of history. So these instruments are actually pretty decent, like um, intermediate upgrade clarinets. Because, um, I mean, it's a wooden clarinet. It doesn't look like it has any cracks. It's in good shape. So a student who might want to upgrade to a wooden instrument, and it's probably worth about $300. I mean, way cheaper than a buffet, uh, an R13. So they're, they're kind of pretty popular with people looking to upgrade on a budget. So this definitely isn't junk. Um, I may like replace a few pads, get it playing, and then uh, maybe pass it along to somebody. Want to know the best able to get a Laura? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I know they're kind of like the, um, they're like akin to the buffet of the oboe world. Um, I don't know much too much about them. And I, I don't really have any ambitions to be an oboe player, although I do really want a bass oboe or a hippo form of it. Probably never got it. Um, I'm thinking of getting a Bundy Contra Alto clarinet on eBay for $595. I was wondering if knows, anyone knows anything about it or if it looks playable. Um, I remember seeing a Bundy on eBay recently. I don't remember. The school had one. Yeah, I have one upstairs. It's just missing a nib. Uh, um, the Bundys are decent instruments, though. Yeah, if it's. Um, it's it's impossible to tell if it's playable just by looking at the pictures. You're you're gonna have to ask the seller and make sure they guarantee that it's gonna be playable, so that if it isn't, you can like use eBay's like case feature to like uh, get your money back. Um, you don't want to buy an instrument sight unseen and expect it to be playable um, if nobody says it's playable. Um, that being said, Bundys are really good uh, contralto clarinets. It's really the cheapest you can get. The next cheapest would be like LeBlanc Vitos, but I really don't like them because they don't have all the trill keys. But yeah, Bundy's are really decent instruments. Uh, $600, by the way, is a, if it's in playing condition, is a really good price. So this is interesting. All this is Yamaha, except for the bottom joint, which is Vito. So. Actually, something interesting. So did you know that, um, um, well, it's not sure anymore, but Yamaha student clarinets used to be made by uh, LeBlanc Vito. So like, for example, the- uh, I found the bell for the Vito. Oh. So, for example, like the the Vito and the Yamaha E flat clarinet, the student model was made by uh, uh, it was made by uh, Vito, um, and I think uh, Yamaha's bass clarinet was also made by Vito, at least the plastic ones. Um, yeah, so that's is that just sitting in the box? <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> okay, so hopefully I can find a lower joint for this Yamaha, and then I'll have another Yamaha. And again, two hundred dollars. These are pretty popular instruments. Another good clarinet, student clarinet, and yeah, most of these are student clarinets. I know. Oh, I know what this is. I mean, oh, it says junk now. Yeah, they, they all have this sticker that just says junk on them. Probably can't see it, but yeah, that makes me feel. This one though, latches don't work. I'm excited for this one. Oh shit! Won't get demonetized because of that. So this is the one thing that I was really, really looking for in this, um, in this kit. This is a Buffet R13 E-flat clarinet. It is a Buffet. Yep. Oh, it's got nickel-plated keys. Uh, based on the serial number, 
probably mid 60s. So this is a golden era instrument. This thing, the key, it's in pretty rough shape. It needs new pads, but. Uh, this is basically worth the price of the box. Oh yeah, these things are crazy. <laughs> if, if I get this, once I get this overhauled and sell it, it's easily worth. Oh, it comes with two barrels too. Oh, this one's got oh, oh. cracked. Okay, so it has a cracked barrel and then it has a, a newer barrel that replaced it, which actually I might try and fix the cracked barrel. Um, and the mouthpiece is a also a buffet mouthpiece. But yeah, so buffet R13 E flat clarinet. So that's a pretty cool instrument. I, I really wanted these because I have the um, I have the B flat. I have a B flat R13. And I have a basset horn. And I have two alto clarinets from Buffet, so I kind of want a D flat to match. So that I'm excited about. And just to, if I just paid six hundred dollars alone for this instrument, I would, I would be ecstatic. So this is a great deal. So this is definitely of all the instruments in this lot, this is the one I'm most excited about. So that's pretty cool. Buffet part gotta be a fun instrument to restore. It looks like it needs a lot of work, but definitely worth it. Sometimes it's just like I don't even know. Oh yeah, that thing. What the heck? Oh, uh, yeah. This is, I guess, what happens when you drop your case. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, no, it actually does look like a ringer. So this is the newer Vito clarinet, but this thing, yeah, this thing's probably gonna be parts. That's what the newer Vito looks logo looks like. By the way, it's just a big V. I'm constantly like buying instruments that are missing parts and just like trying to find parts for them. So this is going to sound really stupid, but so the Bundy Contralto clarinet I had, so I actually had an export originally and I sold it. I don't know why, because now the instrument's just been sitting there. My plan is actually to make my own neck because uh, I wanted something with like a steeper angle, but uh, yeah, so that's kind of a stupid thing. I don't really play Contralto too much. I mostly play Contrabass. Um, but anyway, yeah, this is probably another parts instrument. Okay, so what do we have next? I like that case. I like the leather cases, they look so fancy. You gotta show the camera. That's your job. Need a clarinet. This looks like a plastic instrument. I I don't see a logo on it. It kind of reminds me of the Artley. It doesn't appear to have a serial number. It, just on the looks alone, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is an early student clarinet just because I had one like this when I started. And it, it looked like you can tell from like the brush finish. Um, never mind, it's a Henkin? H E N K I N. I've never heard of that brand. I'm so confused. Is that, is that because of me selling the, the Contra Alto clarinet neck? I'm so messed with what I was for. Yeah, no, not one of my smarter decisions. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So it's a Henkin clarinet. I've never heard of that brand. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's a plastic clarinet. I could probably sell it for 50 bucks. I don't know. Let, let me see how well it plays. What is it? Ads look okay, so let me try and see how this one plays. Oh my, was that where this insane power channeling through this man? <laughs> That's great. Okay, let's see if this instrument plays. I don't know anything about the brand. Um, so let's see if maybe it's just a decent student clarinet. Okay, it's like being... Yeah, uh, it looks like a spring. So oh, it's just kind of corroded. Plays okay. Yeah, probably just a it's a no-name clarinet, but it's probably a good parts instrument. I mean a good instrument to sell to like a student for like 50 bucks. Yeah, I always like having like these clarinets on hand because like in my in my uh, time, I guess, as like a hobbyist instrument repair tech, it, it's really common to find people who like want to play clarinet, but 
really can't spend afford to spend a lot of money. Like maybe they only have fifty bucks to spend. So like no name instruments like these where they play okay, but like there's nothing special about them. These are great instruments for that because like like I've given a few of these instruments to people in the past. So I'll sell them really cheap on eBay and like feel like super if you need a good clarinet. So like in, even instruments like these where they're no name and most clarinets would consider them junk. Um, yeah, they're pretty. They they have their uses. Waking up quick after all. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, so no name clarinet might be good for a student. Nothing special. How many instruments do we have? For? Oh my God. Okay, we have six instruments left. And we've been going for how long is what time is it? Oh, we've only going for 35 minutes. I'm probably going to go back after and try and play some of these instruments. Um, okay, this is another instrument that was most likely removed by the car. <laughs> oh my God. Like, this is like the stuff of my nightmares. <laughs> okay, do I want to open the duct tape? I, I'm just kind of scared to see what's underneath. Like, there, there's pieces of the case falling off of my hand. Oh, there's pieces of the case in the box. Too. Oh my god. Uh, duct tape fixes everything, right? Oh, that's one and a half clarinets. Yeah, is it the other Vito? Um, it is a Vito. Actually, this upper joint's in really good shape, so maybe I'll pair it up with the other lower joint itself. It's like it's a cheap parts clarinet. There is another Artley. And oh, you know, okay, so here's a there's a pair right there. I just actually I'm sure this is oh okay, so I just need a barrel, and I have tons of Vito barrels, so I'll probably pair this with one of the cases from the other instrument, and I'll get a nice uh, student clarinet. Uh, some interesting things to note about this Vito, which is a feature I actually really love on these things. Um, there's a little like dot you see right here. And like this aligns with like a slot in the uh, the socket. And the cool thing about that is it's always perfectly aligned. So you never have to worry about the alignment of the bridge key. That's a nice little feature you see in some Vito student clarinets. I kind of wish you saw it on more instruments because I think that's pretty handy. Like um, bass clarinets, uh, like this, this newer Selmer and Buffet, I think, have this feature, but you don't see it a lot of B-flat clarinets. Okay, anyway, so that's the broken Vito clarinet. Macaroni? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, okay, so somebody <laughs> took some macaroni and cheese duct tape and wrapped the outside of this case. <laughs> that's great. I might just like use this case and just use it to carry it around. This is hilarious. Ooh, buffet. Really? Yeah, buffet B12. That's, that's actually a decent. That's a decent student clarinet. That, that's like a two hundred dollars student clarinet right there. I mean, you know, I don't know. I may actually keep this for a. I don't really have a backup plastic clarinet, and so it's like everything else I own is buffet. Um, Looks like it'll play. I'm right, still looking at it. <laughs> Oh yeah, so we had a deal with my, my girlfriend. Um, she kind of like helped me clean up my house, so she had a deal where she could pick one clarinet from this lot. Um, what is that? I don't know, I like buffet. So why? <laughs> You're done already. Oh, so you weren't trying to do that? <laughs> no, the key's stuck. Uh, just a sticky key. I like that actually. So why? I like this clarinet <laughs> kind of wide. Mm -hmm. I want to keep this one. <laughs> no, I like the UV flat even more. <laughs> Yeah. Do you want to try it? Just like key sticking? Yeah. Yeah. I have my mouth ears? There you go. Oh. It's just, yeah, it's just so, this is actually pretty common in clarinets. So, uh, what you see is like um, the little bridge between like the thumb key and the, uh, the what would be left hand uh, index finger key tends to stick a lot. 
Um, usually what I do is I just put a piece of Teflon right in there, and that usually fixes that up pretty well. Oops, don't do that. We're good 24 minutes. Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> Click with the Clark Nets. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was something buzzing. That's what excerpt am I? Oh, um, I think I was just playing the concerto. Before? Oh, yeah, Mozart. But sometimes you want to unwind to retune. Um, I, I mean, I can't see a situation where that would be useful because uh, I, I think what he's saying is that you, you're able to twist the joints to adjust it. But the cool thing about the Vito is because it, it, there's a pin there, so you can't twist it. It's as long as it's set up correctly, it's always going to be aligned from the factory, which, which is kind of a nice feature. Like, uh, so what, what he's saying um, is that sometimes on clarinet, you need to adjust the bridge key a little bit so you can like, twist the joints like this. But the thing with the Vito, you can't do that because it's assumed that it's going to be adjusted perfectly where you want it when it's um, fully inserted. So I don't know. I guess it depends on how whether you like being able to adjust it or whether you like to be able to set up your instrument the same every time. I don't know. Personally, I like I, I like to have my instrument adjusted exactly how I like it and I just want it to stay there. I don't want to be able I don't usually tend to adjust it any further. I know I mean, the Buff AP12s are pretty decent. Um, oh, this needs to be better. That could be one too. Come on. I don't want this buzzer. Oh, it's a screw. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, not even really. Well, yeah, some of the pads are. Yeah. It'd probably be a pretty good theater. Yeah. I like the case, though. That's my favorite. Part. I mean, you can keep the case if I can have the clarinet. I don't like the clarinets from their cases. Okay, we are down to five clarinets. Okay, buffet. So, what's next? I see another art lay. Oh, we've already seen that. Okay, so this case. Uh, this looks like a pretty vintage case, so I'm not sure what's in here. What does the tag say? W H W J H. Corona Pennsylvania. Let's see what's in this case. This is an A Fontaine. And I actually had an A Fontaine client before. It, I, I turned it into a Bassett clarinet, and then I sold it because I didn't like it. Congress. Does not exist. <laughs> um, That's a pretty, like I said, oh my god. Even that thumb rest is bad. Look at this. At least you have a thumb rest. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but like the thumb rest got like ripped out of the wood. There you go. The thumb rest just got ripped out of the wood and they moved it up. That's actually not so common. That I can be filled in pretty easy with like uh, granadilla dust and super glue, but uh, yeah, pretty generic uh, French stencil clarinet. Not not great clarinet, not a terrible clarinet, just a average wooden clarinet. That seems super well. I never had to. It is needed when the pad under the top of the key doesn't close properly. So the, I guess the idea with the Vito is some of these instruments are fairly stiff. So once they're set up well by somebody who knows what they're doing, and I will say again, somebody who knows what they're doing, because uh, it's very common for people to not know what they're doing, um, uh, then the idea is that the key shouldn't bend because they're so stiff. And if it's adjusted perfectly the first time, every time you assemble it, it's going to be adjusted good. So, I mean, it's just kind of like another piece of my thing for like students, assuming they get their client service correctly. Um, I guess kind of a big if. Is he on the Yeah, but there's no thumb rest, so. Tons of. Do you have many parts clarinets we have right now? <laughs> Most of the parts? Like, I figure from these 20 instruments, we can probably salvage like 10 of them and just like make them all good and then maybe I'll sell them and then the rest I'll just keep for parts or something. But yeah, so this is just the Yamaha 24 2. So I think it's an older model than the 200. Who doesn't use a thumb rest? You got to use shear and it's almost go problem a bit. I mean, I'm sure they try to use it, but it's just kind of, it snapped off, which I've never seen a thumb rest snap like that. I don't know how that could happen, like unless you were trying to break it. Yeah, but fortunately, thumb rests are pretty easy to replace. I may even put an adjustable thumb rest on this, but uh, 
Yeah, Yano had clarinet, nothing special. <laughs> Did you close the case yes. on your finger? Oh, God. Oh, my God. There's just a giant pile of clarinet next to me. Yeah, that's a veto, right? I'm a pro, but you also bring Patrick up front. I like the Patrick's <laughs> thing. Oh, the key's closed in my hand. Um. Yeah, so uh, so this was an instrument. Uh, Vito is usually made in Elkhart, Indiana. Um, they tried for a little bit for making instruments in Wisconsin, I guess because it was like cheaper to make them there. But it's basically just a pretty simple Vito plastic student clarinet, nothing special. Again, a decent student instrument, uh, probably worth like 100 bucks, fully restored. Um, yeah, nothing special about that. Um, you know how clarinets tend to like snap in half? On um, work. I have like 10 maze clarinets upstairs that are like completely broken in half. In half, half? Like that was an F key that's just dangling now. It's okay, it's just an R lane, nobody cares. No, no, like, it literally snapped an F. It's not uncommon. Student instruments are not paying attention, they drop it, at least they get a free case out of it, right? That parts. Yeah. Here's some parts and here's a, uh, more parts. Don't stab yourself with a spring. Well, somebody like stepped on it or something. It's like, like the rod even. The rod that the thumb key was bent. So that thing must have experienced some pretty crazy trauma. Uh, yeah, just a cheap Bartley clarinet. Nothing, nothing too bad. Okay. Yeah, last clarinet. Oh, boy. All right. Hi, Ray. Oh yeah, there's there's lots of parts that just fell out. There's some reeds, there's some uh, a ring. <laughs> What's this one? Are we clearing it? Mm, no. Oh. Maybe. Actually, mm, oh, this looks like a the Bundy. The plastic kind of looks like Bakelite. Is it, is it, I can't tell it's Vito. Yeah, it's a Vito Rosatone. Okay. Yeah, I'm but again, simple student learning. Is clarinet PTSD a thing? It is absolutely a thing. That's not to have. Yeah, like the moment you break your first clarinet, you, you just, your soul just kind of dies and there's no coming back from that. <laughs> I used to bend oh. the keys a lot as a kid. Oh. Um, you know how you're not supposed to like jam it together? And then I have to go ahead. Yeah, so this is why you shouldn't hold it. And as a kid, I used to hold it that way because I wasn't corrected. So my local music shop kind of loves seeing me. I love like being able to fix my own clarinets as a kid. I mean, I didn't do a great job of it like back then, but you know, at least I didn't go to the music shop all the freaking time. Okay. Oh, uh, well, so that's the uh, that's the last clarinet. So yeah, most of them are either Artley or Vito instruments. Uh, uh, quite a few of them are yes. broken down. A lot of them play. Uh, some of them do play decently, and some of them are yeah Yamahas. So a few decent instruments. So that's pretty good. Yeah, I think um, so. I mentioned I spent about a little over six hundred dollars on this lot. I think it's definitely worth it. Uh, I don't know. You want to try any of the instruments we picked out? Yes. I gotta find a ring for you. Okay, where's that? Where is the uh, the wonky flat? Let's see if I can have one playing. I've only played an E flat once in my life, and that was the other time we've been here. <laughs> Two years. Yeah, so now I have four E flat clarinets at the moment. I will gladly take one from our deal. <laughs> this one I think will sell for pretty nice because it's a very nice instrument. Okay, the summer is getting over. Which one? The summer? Yeah. Which one's the summer? Isn't it? That, never mind. I need. Mean, See, some of us got up early with you when he went to work to wait for a UPS man to get show up until. Oh, four. yeah, I made her get up early because I didn't know when the UPS guy was going to come. I came at 4 p.m. Okay, well, I can't find the. Uh, well, no, I can't find it. I just can't get So, like, there's a ring. The tenon ring is, like, stuck inside the case because it's, like, some variety. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can find a mouthpiece for this thing and then we can see if we get it playing. Yeah, the mouthpiece right here. Oh, I have a mouthpiece right here. 
The only mouthpiece I have is like one that came with my Bluesy and Hawks clarinet, so I don't know how good it's going to play. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> yeah. 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 Y
Uh, maybe I'll release a video on that before the end of the year. I want an E flat, but I'm too broke. Um, yeah, that's like unfortunately kind of thing. The one instrument I could recommend that's like really cheap. It's like a German instrument that's made in China. It's called the Kinder Clary. It's like a it's like a simplified E flat made for students. They're not great, but like um, they play somewhat in tune. The, the Chinese E flat pianos I've seen for like hundred bucks in eBay. The ones I bought haven't played in tune, unfortunately. So I can't recommend them. Are you selling the E flat? I'm probably going to end up selling the LeBlanc, but not the Buffet. Um, but that's probably going to be a while because so I'm going to like overhaul it and everything. I'm probably going to ask like, geez, it's probably worth about like fifteen hundred to two thousand. I don't know. Like, you don't usually see LeBlanc sell too often, but it's like a, it's a professional model. So yeah, I'm going to try and like do that. Try and make a little bit of profit from this. You know, that'll be fun. Um, How do you make the straight alto clarinet neck? Wait, how do you make this out of PVC? Oh, do you mean how to make this in, this out of PVC? Oh, do you mean like the do you mean like the curved sections here? I'm assuming that's what you mean because these were kind of the, the, the part that took me the hardest time, the longest time to figure out. Because uh, with this instrument, the, the bends here, I was actually planning on just using like regular like a uh, like regular PVC elbows where it's just like a 90 degree elbow. But I found that there was actually too much restriction because it wasn't a smooth curve. So I had to find like something with a smooth curve. Um, so what I ended up doing is this is like a, a like a sink trap, like you'd have underneath your kitchen sink. Um, and I kind of just cut it in the right shape and glued it in. And uh, it, it works pretty well. It actually made the instrument a lot more free blowing and it really helped with the upper register. Um, yeah, so that's a neat little bit of acoustics I kind of figured out. Um, if you can like the rusted instrument, it's all just standard PVC. This is like a, um, it's for electrical tubing, the tuning slide, it's a conduit, um, electrical conduit. It's uh, it's basically just like a um, two pieces of pipe with like O-rings in the center. You can get them for like 20 bucks at like Lowe's and Home Depot. So that, that made a really nice like tuning slide so I could take the neck out. I'm just gonna do that right now, but you can take the neck out. So that was pretty handy. Um, other than that, yeah, it's just like a basic parts you find at a hardware store. Uh, and a lot of clarinet keys. I actually, my next step is I got to figure out how to make left hand levers as well as um, a right hand E flat trill key. Uh, and I need to make a, a left hand thumb key and then an A and a flat key and then the lower register vent. And then that's all the keys I have to make to make a simplified um, uh, burn system clarinet. My cat just started has a jar when he saw my screen. <laughs> That's great. That's He's staring at me. Hi, Tara. Cats do that. That's so cute. Oh, wait. Hi, Tara. My cat watches the Capital Wins concert. My cat, was, my cat loves like watching the TV. Actually, I haven't seen my cat in a while. Where I, okay, where did I put the buffet file? I know. Oh, it's here. It's in your, uh, next to me. Oh, there it is. I asked you last month if you were interested in having a two by one mushroom uh, tube for one of your clarinet mouthpieces. You told me go for it. Does that mean yes? I mean, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. Do you do you mean like do you, do you like want to make one and send it to me? Um, I don't really. I, I have my own like experiments. I'm kind of working on. I think it would be cool if like you made that and like tried it and like kind of like refined your instruments because I know you've got that whole kind of project going. Uh, do I need one? No, I've got I've got all my own projects. I don't need anything. Don't worry about me. Finish your project. I have so many projects I have to finish. Always talk about it. You start I start projects. I go halfway and then I don't finish them. Okay, where's the? Looks like I'm missing like a tenon ring for this bun for the buffet. Is that also still in No, it's just missing. There's a ring here, but it doesn't fit. It's too loose, so that's probably not the original ring. Oh, shoot. My mouthpiece doesn't fit, man. It's, like, too loose. Oh, wait. Where's the crack barrel? That's the one. Like, why are E-flat clarinet mouthpieces not, like, standardized? Because, like, I have E-flat clarinets where some of my mouthpieces are too tight. I have some where they're too loose. Like your uh, no, so the octal contrabass clarinet, it, it's not finished because it's um, I had some acoustical problems and I just felt that the final product wouldn't have been as good as I wanted to. 
I do eventually want to make a, a better one with firm system keyword, but I, I need to really plan how I'm going to do that. I mean, I'm still kind of struggling to try to figure out keyword for this. So I think once I finish this, I'm going to try and make a more refined version of the Octo Contra base. Love that. Well, not so much math. It's just figuring out the keyword. I mean, like building keyword is is um, is easy in theory because it's essentially just um, you take your parts, you out of metal, like you have your rods, your pad cups, which I sound from other instruments, touch bases. And you can just solder them together, but just like just taking all the time to like solder them and just fit them, it's just it, it's very labor intensive. And unfortunately, I'm just kind of a busy guy, you know, I just can't like uh, put yeah, all job. yeah, and that's what kind of sucks about having a full time a, a full time job. I mean, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'm like a my day job is actually engineering, not related to music whatsoever. So unfortunately, by the time I get home, I just don't have any time to work on these projects. I mean, science because you kind of have like money to fund your projects, but you just don't have time. So it's kind of a trade off, you know. Eventually, I want to go like full time into instrument repair and doing projects, but I don't know. It's kind of like my retirement plan. So we'll see. My friend bent her clarinet keys, pulled off the pads, carries it around without the keys, and puts it in her locker, but she wonders why her clarinet doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the people who like never change their oil in their cars and like never check the tire pressure and then wonder why it breaks down. He hasn't like cleaned and cleaned it either. Now that you mentioned that. Oh yeah, like those people who don't <laughs> clean their mouthpieces. That, that stuff's disgusting. Actually, you think those mouthpieces have been cleaned? You've been used. No, this is their mouthpiece. Cool. Okay, well, at least this person cleaned their mouthpiece. They're like. Why do they have the oil in there too? I smell. Oh yeah, they have key oil. Yeah, so it looks like they cared. Oh, but it's not official buffet key oil, it's the one key oil, so it doesn't count. Right. Maybe There's... they have money just for the clarinet, but not the, you know. <laughs> also these cases. Sometimes you find like really nice little things in like cases. Like I find like mouthpieces like hidden inside like the bottom department of cases. Because one of the base clarinets I use that had hole in the case. So everything just used to like get stuck out yeah, right. Like my contrabando case had like tons and tons of reason. Why don't I try and use the LeBlanc? Okay. I was gonna say I could use the LeBlanc barrel on the buffet, yeah. but yeah, it didn't work. Okay. Okay. So what if I put the barrel on and I wrap my mouthpiece with tape and use that to get a good seal? That might work. Where do I have tape? Just right there. I mean, I actually, actually, no, because I cleaned. Okay. Uh, actually, I don't want to say it. Let me just put it in this You might have thrown that all out while I was cleaning. Okay, now I have a piece of paper. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I just have a little piece of paper here, and I'm just going to kind of wrap it around my mouthpiece to create a seal. Um, it looks like I'm probably going to have to record this mouthpiece to your friend has chosen death. He hasn't woken any single clarinet yet, guys. Probably because the wood moved too much since the E-flat clarinet center than it be. No, I, it's just that, like, a lot of um, instruments, like the mouthpiece sizes and stuff, aren't standardized. Uh, B-flat clarinets are pretty standardized, so you can take pretty much any B-flat mouthpiece and it's going to fit any instrument within reason, but like um, harmony clarinets, like a lot of older bass clarinets, like especially ones from Germany, they'll use like a, a mouthpieces that have a much smaller diameter, which means you you really can't use a modern bass clarinet mouthpiece in some older like colored instruments without enlarging it. Um, in E flat clarinets, it's not as bad, but uh, again, there's still some a lot of uh, tolerance with it. So, Okay, so I just wrapped some paper around it. So let's see if I can get this thing to play. <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah, it's about as good as I'll ever sound on E-flat clarinet. My alto clarinet mouthpiece and reeds are from the 1990s because I got it from my band director today. He didn't have any reeds, so I used the reed that was on the instrument. The reeds are from the 90s? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> that's what that's, I heard you say. I hope that's not what you meant. Um, go, oh, you can sometimes use alto sax reeds on alto clarinet. Uh, I haven't had much luck with it, but it's like in a pinch it works. In Brett Street Mustang, I told him about the bass clarinet sign with the amplitude modulation applied. Were you there for it? 
Yeah, I could not hear Brett's stream at all just because my computer speakers aren't the best. Well, I could kind of hear—I could kind of hear it after I like put the volume all the way up and put my face right next to the computer. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah, I—I imagine I, I just because generally instruments with a conical bore versus a cylindrical bore, they have more overtones. So um, just generally, very roughly speaking. It, it, there's more overtones to the sound. So if you increase the amplitude of those overtones, it's probably going to make it sound more like a uh, conical bore instrument. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting thought. Yeah, my band director used to think that, like, when I was playing, it was, like, the bass saxophone. Or, like, when they were playing, it was me. It was so weird. Like, she got confused all the time. And when I was, like, she thought it was very sax. Yeah. It's on bass. It's just weird. Yeah, that's why it's possible to like kind of emulate a, yeah. a very sax sound on bass clarinet, especially if you use like an open mouth piece yeah. and like um, I guess kind of like a softer read. I don't yeah, know. when I started. Yeah, it, it, like because you're producing a little bit more overtone, and like I found that like uh, like older instruments, like um, well instruments like like the new summer privilege, like in, newer instruments are designed to sound more dark, meaning they have less overtones, but like. Uh, Older instruments have like more overtones, so it's kind of easier to sound like a sax on them, which I think is why, like jazz players tend to gravitate towards older sounder instruments. I mean, that sound makes sense. I mean, yeah, helicopter. It's a really interesting. Uh, it's kind of interesting uh, to think about. Uh, it is actually probably part of the reason why I prefer older bass clarinets to newer instruments. Um, all right. Uh, I don't know, anyone, anyone want to hear me play the oboe again? Uh, I think I could. A little practice, maybe that could sound good on it. Hot cross bones. I don't know if good at plays because the oboes are like so finicky. Like, maybe not. I need to learn you. The bassoon you have sitting out there. Well, I think bassoons are a lot more tolerant of leaks than oboes. Oboes, if they have any leaks whatsoever, they just won't play. Like the sounds, like well, like something like with the whisper key, you're basically introducing a leak into the instrument. I don't know. I was mentioning so, the the broken bassoon on your counter. Oh, well, that's just for parts for another project. <laughs> No, please no. Okay. Uh, not today, Satan, not today. Right. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, past, you know, people's bedtimes in this area. So no. How are you tired already? It's not people. Do you have neighbors? I don't know. Uh, you have cats. You're going to make the cats run and start stuff. Oh, the cats love a little. So yeah. <laughs> no one wants that. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess um, we're probably going to... My fun story about Oboes. My two friends, one was my best friend in high school, they trapped me in a practice room, and we had these, like, little soundproof rooms in my high school, and they would play Oboes together just to watch my reaction, but make sure it was out of tune as they did it. So, this is what I know. It is awesome. I don't know. I mean, Oboes one of those instruments where when it's played well, it sounds really good. But yeah. if you're like anything less than an expert, it's just torture. <laughs> standard tube has the same number of harmonics as a cone in the same way. They just start on different pitches, so they sound different. Um, can you like get an oak, like a uh, a closed tube like that to over? Well, I mean, I've never seen that used as like a technique by like pan flute players. I've never seen a pan flute player like overblow. Then again, I really don't know much about pan flute, so. I don't know. How to, does they, do they overblow the octave? Really? Does that Probably. is that how it works? Is that weird? I, I don't know. I don't. I, I would assume they would overblow it at twelve, if at all. I don't know. Acoustics is kind of a very interesting subject. I kind of did a little bit of in college, but I never like went in. Kind of. It's more like I don't know what you would call like the science of instrument acoustics. Oh, is this the study of instruments and how they're made and everything is organology? It's kind of like a, isn't that more, isn't organology more of like the history of instruments? Yeah, and also everything about them possible. Sure, Tubes do overblow the. Oh, so I mean, like, uh, you mean like a conical tube? Yeah, like like saxophones are a little bit, but I mean, like, with like a closed tube, like a pan flute, would that overblow the octave? Oh my God, my hands are just covered in dust. Okay, I don't know what else. Uh, I guess we're getting kind of ready to. Uh, Wrap it up if anybody else has any questions. Uh, yeah, I, mean, uh, I could play some instruments if you guys want to hear it, but I think you guys all know what kind of what, like in general oh, instruments sound like. They're you know, they're just uh, they're mostly some instruments. I mean, overall, I'm really happy with like what I got. I think it's a great deal for like 600. Yeah, that's what I figured. Like a close cylinder overblows at like a 12. 
Um, anyway, yeah, like I'm really, I'm really happy with what I got. So I think I can, what my plan basically with these instruments is I'm going to, um, uh, so most of them I'm going to try and sell just because I don't need any clarinets. I get one of them. Okay, do you want to pick out your one clarinet? Please don't say the buffet. Please don't want a Yamaha's. I have a Yamaha and I had a Yamaha that I sold. So I'm going to try to sell it. I want this for cleaning an entire house. Do you know how many of the LeBlanc paper hook hearts all those were made? Um, a decent amount. I mean, they were pretty popular, especially with like um, with colleges and stuff. Uh, yeah. It, um, LeBlanc, in general, their low clarinets were pretty popular. They're mostly purchased by, like, um, university programs because those are really the only uh, organizations that could really afford them at the time. Because you, let's keep in mind, these were very expensive top-of-the-line instruments in their day. Um, that being said, I mean, there's lots of work, uh, universities with a strong music program around the country, especially so in the closer to the middle of the 20th century. Uh, so you, you, you saw a lot of uh, universities purchasing the instrument, and then... Is it just, no, don't take the, are you taking the tape back? No, they're not staying. But now that these universities are, um, well, now that these instruments are starting to get older and starting to get beat down, uh, they're starting to be sold out more, which is why you see a lot of them show up on eBay. So they're not extremely common, but they're not necessarily uncommon. You, you, um, which, which is good news for us, though, because like uh, now musicians can afford these instruments. I mean, the prices of them, though, are definitely going up is because uh, a lot of the instruments that, were destined to be sold off have already been sold off so they're starting to become more scarce again so their prices are starting to go up so i wouldn't be surprised if they come a lot more scarce in the future um all right um i guess if anybody uh got more last minute questions so i forgot what was i saying before that i was happy with all the instruments i gave you an instrument don't take my buffet uh, i like the buffet though I mean, then again, I already have like, uh, I guess I already have a bag of clarinet. I have the Schreiber Aura I gotta do something with. Yeah, my bag so, of Yamaha. Anyway, so yeah, I'm probably going to sell off most of the Yamahas, uh, probably sell a little more after overall it, and then maybe sell some of the other instruments. And then the rest, I'm probably just going to like throw in a box and sell it as like one box of parts for like 100 bucks. And then, you know, there's going to make some profit and they're now, they'll have a nice buffet R13 E flat clarinet. So that'll be, will be a pretty uh, fun little project to get all these instruments out of here. Uh, if, any, if any of you guys um, want any instruments you've seen, uh, feel free to contact me at octocontrabase at juma.com. Uh, we can work something out like that. Otherwise, I'm probably just going to list them on eBay and you can probably find them there. Um, yeah, so uh, anyway, thank you guys for joining me for the stream. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun uh, doing the boxing and then. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and do some more streams once I have more topics to talk about. Uh, the, the unboxing is definitely fun. I haven't really done, well, I guess I did one unboxing video, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but this is like the only 20 card unboxing video on YouTube. Well, there's the other listing of eBay. No, I'm not buying any more. I got, I got to pay off my credit card after buying this thing. And there's a hand of so I don't need any more instruments. I have too many instruments already. I gotta get rid of some of these ones. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess we're gonna have some. Ooh, what do you have for dessert? We're gonna have some cannolis for dessert. Oh yes. Yeah, and enjoy our start of our weekend. So uh, thank you everyone for joining me. Hope you all have a wonderful uh, holiday season. Have a merry Christmas, happy New Year's, happy Hanukkah. Boxing day. Boxing day. Canadians, Boxing day. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everyone. Uh, hopefully I'll see you next stream. Uh, if, oh, if you've got any questions in the meantime, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. Um, all right, everyone. Have a wonderful night.